Let's rock and roll. All right, so um, I'm Tim. This is gonna be a screenshot for the win. Uh, if I'm a little bit groggy, it's because I've been up all night converting all the W's to curly W's. Go Nats. <laughs> All right, so real quick, this is a hack. This is uh, you know, something that for a long time, I didn't really want to admit that I did, it's kind of a dirty secret. Um, you know, I've always been uh, kind of feeling like an imposter in a lot of ways. Uh, you know, probably a lot of people in the room who, who feel the same way, but like, I really got this feeling. So uh, a couple years back, I was given this chance to, to lead the MAPS team at, our, at, at the Post, and you know, I'm here talking to the greatest Cardo conference in the world, but I'm not a cartographer, at least I don't think so. Um, I don't have a degree in geography, remote sensing, even journalism for that matter. Um, <laughs> that's an art, I've got an art degree. Uh, but I, you know, I'm just up here trying to make it work, trying to figure things out. Um, so at the Post, uh, you know, we, we try to strive for some of the best journalism in the world. Um, and we are, uh, I, like I said, I'm in charge of leading the, the fast paced graphics response to breaking news. Um, so our newsroom is conveniently plastered with these quotes from uh, legendary Post editors and journalists. So, uh, this is one that's always kind of stuck with me uh, now more than ever, I guess. Uh, Phil Graham was a publisher at the Post back in the 1940s, 50s, 60s. Um, so every time there's breaking news, typically that means a map. You know, the five W's, who, what, where, when, why, how. The where is usually something we know first pretty quickly. Uh, so we've gotten a lot of practice with making maps quickly. Um, at the same time, we're well aware that the media landscape is changing, it's rapidly evolving, it's on us to evolve. That means that we've been forced to push limits, try new things, take risks, optimize, find efficiencies, and iterate. Uh, and on top of that, the competition is incredibly fierce. Uh, not just our friend from the New York Times, the Wall Street Journal, if you heard from earlier, uh, but also from social media, citizen journalism, uh, and when it comes to breaking news, basically, uh, a, a phrase that we've kind of embraced is that if you're not first, you're last. Um, and so they really <laughs> went a little overboard with this one. I was really surprised to see that when I started at the job. But um, so we've gotten pretty, pretty damn fast in making, making maps at the post. Um, and today I'm going to talk about one of, the, one of the tools that we use and how we use it. Um, so here's the WAPO race team. Lauren Tierney's riding shotgun. I'm driving because I'm up here talking. <laughs> Laris is uh, sitting in the back, and, and Armand and Manjame is also back there with him. They drew the short straws. There's not a lot of room in the back of those seats. Uh, Craig, shake and bake, brother, for that nice logo down there. <laughs> all right, so we've gotten pretty quick at mapping because we, we practice with all these tools, Natural Earth, Census, Maps for News, OSM. You can whoop, shout out if your favorite one comes up. You know. Imagery from all these folks. There, Descartes is up there. We got Google Earth, Picto, you know, scene designer, juicy pyramid shader, hillshade. We love that. I'm a QGIS guy. Other folks on the team use Arc. Uh, and then we go into Illustrator, Photoshop. We make our custom projections, do some funky 3D stuff. Blender is so hot right now. <laughs> Sometimes we use D3. Don't forget Avenza, and then we actually do use a lot of G Arc uh, to do a lot of analysis. But you know that that prize spot right there by the window—that's where I keep that screenshot tool. <laughs> so this wouldn't be a screenshot for the wind talk without how to screenshot. Uh, frankly, you can Google this, <laughs> um, which is what I had to do. <laughs> so I I've got the muscle memory. It's basically just like a little claw maneuver I do. But it's like command, shift, four, but then also you can mix in control. And then like if you just want to copy a specific, specific, a specific area, you click and drag. But you, uh, capturing an entire window is actually pretty helpful. Um, so that's cool. On the PC, uh, it's actually much simpler, uh, I think. <laughs> I didn't test this out, but I think it's just the window key and then the print screen. So, and that will copy it to the clipboard. Again, Google that. Don't take my word for it. All right. So we use screenshots um, from projects large to small. Um, so on the small side, you know, we need to like make quick maps, right? And let's be honest, nobody's landing a plane based on the maps in the Washington Post. And <laughs> if they are, there are a lot of other things that have gone wrong first. <laughs> All right, so like, let's suppose we wanted to make a map of uh, Klamath Falls, uh, Oregon, which is uh, home to uh, 300 days of sunshine and uh, Lauren Tierney. Uh, Amazing cartographer. Uh, so a lot of times when we make maps, we, uh, you know, people will say, can I put the lat long in? Where do I do that? Do I have to go to Q's? Um, I don't, I just like, if it's in the middle of the state, 
I will go to Google Maps and I'll like zoom out a little bit so I get the whole state, I get a coastline, I get some geographic features. I'll take that screenshot and then I will go back into another map that we've already made. Benefit of working at the Post is that we make a lot of maps. Um, so this is a travel map that I made and I will paste that screenshot in there and delete the old thing because that's not what we're locating anymore. And uh, I'll paste it in there, kind of line it up with some, uh, you know, some geographic features and pick in the southwest corner of the state here and uh, uh, just kind of scale it and rotate it and get it into place. Um, <laughs> and you know what? That lines up pretty damn well. <laughs> and then you, you just drop a dot on it and load it. You, know, you don't need to go make a you know, lat long, get the, you know, the coordinates and all that. Just put it there. I mean, it's, a, it's this big. <laughs> there you go. So another way that I use it is like whenever something quick happens. So this happened, you know, Notre Dame fire, caught on fire. Uh, it was the same day as the Pulitzer Prize announcement. So the entire newsroom is like over waiting to hear if we won something. And I'm sitting here making a map of Notre Dame Cathedral. Um, but when I'm using like oblique or 3D imagery, so we do this for like Notre Dame stuff, but like unfortunately we do it a lot with mass shootings. You know, something happens someplace and the, you know, the shape of the building or the layout really matters. Um, so I built this in like 30 minutes. And again, what I did is I spun up Google Maps. Um, this imagery uh, we did check uh, before I gave this talk is fair use for us to use um, whenever we're using it in a journalism context. So I, I spin it up. I actually click that little 3D view button um, and then kind of rotate it, get it into, get it into shape, and uh, get it into my spot, turn off the labels, because that's a pain in the butt to remove in post, and then you screenshot it, and you uh, take this in. You know, we do tone our stuff in Photoshop pretty, pretty heavily, because uh, we know how our presses work and how things uh, you know, operate in that regard. But um, that's pretty much it. Um, and you dump some labels on there. The hardest part of that graphic, if I can go back, hardest part of this was drawing the scaffolding in perspective. Uh, because there's scaffolding that was part of this story. Um, another reason, I use QGIS. A lot of times I don't know how to use QGIS. So I've got this thing, and if anybody knows how to fix this, please just come find me. I will be around this weekend. But like, if I'm zoomed in, like, I can have like this. I can, and I do a lot of my composition in QGIS. This is with like some uh, pyramid shader terrain. Got some like land cover database on there. Got you know did some DEM you know. Uh, kind of modifications to that. When I'm zoomed in, it looks great. But like when I zoom out, I'm pretty sure it's like ta it's got to do with that international dateline or the poles or something like that. Anyway, so I don't I don't know how to deal with that. So, but whenever I need to uh, make something like an inset map of Alaska, I'll screenshot it. And I what I do is I like make sure that I'm taking a bunch of screenshots. There's a lot of overlap between them, and I'll just kind of go through, make sure that there's plenty you know plenty of work there. Uh, I'll duplicate all those, save those, dupe them into a cropped folder, go and crop them in Photoshop. If you've got like 30 of these things, you might want to set up like a Photoshop action to crop them, which is pretty easy. Um, but then what I do is I bring them into Photoshop and I will, um, I'll use this photo merge tool, which is pretty darn sweet. And you, you click photo merge, it basically takes a bunch of files. This is made for like taking panoramas with a bunch of, you know, bunch of photos and an SLR. Um, select your images, bring them in, and what it does is, it goes a lot slower than that, but I sped it up. It'll stitch them together, and that's pretty cool. So sorry about the illusions. Um, and this is actually a twofer with the screenshots, because then I went back to QGIS, screenshot of the state, used the same thing, brought it in here. I'll reduce the opacity down to like 50% if I click the right spot. And then uh, you basically line it up, scale it in there, and uh, make it fit. And like, this is super hacky, but it works so well. <laughs> so once that's lined up, you know, it's a little bit harder than I thought, but it works at this scale. Again, nobody's like booking their travel plans to Alaska based on this map. And there you go. That's fun, right? And that's really only because I don't know how to use the software. So, all right, next thing. QGIS, again, like if I, this was like the global fires thing, whenever that happened, that was a really big deal. This was like 20 million points of, of fires. You know, you plot it, you open it up in QGIS. It did open, the, I got 20 years worth of this data from MODIS. Um, it did open in QGIS, but there's no way it was gonna export. 
So what I did is I just colored it by, uh, you know, by the month. We tried to look for the patterns. I know end rainbow and all that kind of stuff, but you know what, we did it, you know. Uh, every month is a different color, but what's, that, what's kind of cool is that you can see the seasonality of it. Um, made each dot barely visible so that whenever they kind of all work together, they will punch up the color. And you'll have bright spots where there's lots of fires, you'll have dark spots where they're not. Um, screenshot of these, stitch them together, and uh, I did pretty darn good, except for that little sliver on the left, which I had to fix manually. But that's not too bad. Um, one other thing, uh, when you need to get a little bit fancy with your halos. So we, do, uh, we, we like to do nice text halos with our stuff. This is a map that Laris made of Hong Kong during the protests. And uh, you know, we don't like white halos. Uh, the Nat Geo guys used a WAPO map last year and it talked about when you don't want to use a white halo. So I remember that. <laughs> so I want that. I want that color underneath, but uh, you know, Laris made this with like raster imagery and some like like blend modes that I've never heard of before, like soft glow. Who uses soft glow? So I screenshotted that, and then like eyedropper it, and it'll eyedropper from the raster, not from the vector that's underneath it. And then you find one that works, that looks pretty darn good, and uh, that one looks good. Yeah, delete that little screenshot snippet, and you're good to go. That blends in pretty well. You can blur that or do whatever you want to do. Um, so those are like the quick, the quick ones, right? But we also do big Mondo projects. So like election night, we made our election maps with screenshots. <laughs> so online, we did this. Armand, this is Armand's world. He made, uh, you know, with a feed from AP, you know, we fed this directly automatically. But for print, we had to make like four different versions of these maps. Um, and not just, uh, you know, before time, but there's a lot of maps, you know, this is a big deal. So this is 2018. Um, so we, we made them throughout the night at different closing time because the newspaper gets distributed to different places. You gotta give them time to print, yada, yada, yada. Here's what, that's, uh, what those maps look like, which is pretty, pretty good. When you zoom in, like you see a little bit of the... <laughs> but you know what? When you print on newsprint, it's like printing on toilet paper is what somebody's... <laughs> Nobody's going to know that. Nobody's going to see it. Um, and all the, all the line work and all the labels are in vector. So that's like, that's good. So those print right. But it's just the color. All right. And so here's what that looked like. And the way that we did this is we uh, like made sure that the, the screen, we fed it a blank map. Colors were pre, predetermined. We tested them. Um, and we set up a, to a certain size. Aaron, who did this. Uh, maximize his window so he could get that 2100 by 1330 size every single time. And he just like would screenshot the entire window and then like relink that file all night long. And so, you know, we didn't just do those and don't get Ken Field started on election maps. <laughs> we did cartograms, you know, this is a, a Senate map or a governor's map and that's which this is the Senate map. And we also did since we're in DC, the Virginia and Maryland de detailed results. Um, another big project, Denise worked on this one with us. You know, we mapped the entire 2017 eclipse. We wanted to make a, an atlas of the 2017 eclipse. And uh, we did this whole thing in screenshots. <laughs> so here's how we did it. So we, ca you know, we, uh, we didn't use Google Earth imagery because it was like, it didn't quite fit what we wanted to do. Um, but what we ended up doing was uh, you know, building out with land cover and hill shade and just basically creating um, uh, a raster file. And you can import that raster file, uh, GeoTIFF, into, into Google Earth. Um, and then we, put rubber, like, we also imported into Google Earth the, uh, the, the lines, the, the perimeter of the shadow. And uh, we actually put rubber bands on the screen to, to make sure that we lined it up. And it was, <laughs> layers had to stay on target. And then, uh, you know, so we, what we do is we just move it down, making sure that we lined it up, kept it lined up. And uh, in, in all, we captured more than 100 screenshots of, these, uh, of the thing. Um, and then we took that into Photoshop and stitched it together using that same Alaska method that I showed you earlier. And then we took that into Illustrator and added all the labels. Uh, there are more than 1,000 labels in all. Um, and you could only get a third of the path in any given Illustrator file. It was really too big. So, Finishing up, this is a one-way ticket. If you go down the road of the screenshot, uh, chances are you might be hurting in a little bit. Uh, 
So also, if you need like super, super duper print ready files, like your magazine or, or offset printing or whatever, this probably isn't the, the route to go. Um, on newsprint, it's okay. Ch -ch -ch changes. My editor on that, uh, that Eclipse project at the end decided she wanted interstates and roads on there. <laughs> and we got them on there, but it involved a lot of drawing. So that <laughs> was sucked. This, you, know, you lose any kind of geographic awareness of your files whenever you do that. Um, and then also, and better be dead, make sure that you are a good fellow to your, to your other uh, cartographers, your other editors on your team, because the last thing you want to see when you open up one of my files is this. So um, if a Lauren calls me at 11 o'clock at night saying, hey, your Oregon thing isn't embedded. Do you have that file? Um, so that's, that's what I got. Um, I want to spread the good word of the screenshot, so use this hashtag. <laughs> if you do, I got a sticker with your name on it. It's a little screenshot tool. Um, you can follow me on Twitter. I don't tweet a lot, uh, but Post Graphics does. And if you want a 30-day uh, pass of the post, just go wapost slash nasist. You get free 30-day thing. There might be some news. Who knows? <laughs> um, and then you can download the slides there if you want them. I'm sure there's not time, so find me throughout the week. I'll be around. Uh, and thank you.